Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, all praises and glory be unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well, peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. You Akim and few Akwatim that believe in Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai with their whole heart, mind, body, and spirit, and who are waiting for these last and final prophecies to unfold in the earth. In the return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Doomsday clock at 100 seconds to midnight. World stuck in an extremely dangerous moment. You know, what does the scripture say? You know, that in the end days, you know, perilous times shall come. You know, what does perilous mean? It means dangerous. You know, so, you know, E is stuck on this climate change thing. You know, but then also you have uh, the situation of what's going on, you know, with the nations rising up against, you know, the whore. And then also you have, you know, this, this, uh, uh, these plagues and pestilence, you know, so that's what's influencing, you know, their uh, position on keeping, you know, the doomsday clock at a hundred seconds to midnight, you know? So reading on, it says ongoing nuclear risk the threat of climate change, disruptive technologies in the seemingly endless sea have uh, brought us as close to doomsday as we've ever been, according to the annual doomsday clock announcement uh, Thursday in Washington, D.C., you know, which there's an announcement, you know, on the doomsday clock every January, you know, and since the, the making of this in 1947, they say it's only been set back backwards or the time has went backwards 24 t uh, times, you know, since uh, 2020, you know, it, uh, it went f forward and it's been stuck at 100 seconds and it unchanged. It's been unchanged since uh, since then, you know, it didn't change in 2021 or in 2022. We didn't know and it says the countdown point is the same as last year the clock remains closer to destruction than at any point since it was created in 1947. the 2022 doomsday clock statement explains that the decision does not by any means suggest that the international security situation has stabilized you know on the contrary the clock remains the closest it has ever been to civilization ending apocalypse uh salakia let me read that again on the contrary the clock remains the closest it has ever been to civilization ending apocalypse because the world remains stuck in an extremely dangerous moment now if that doomsday clock you know hit zero in the motb isn't established, you know, nothing is, 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 is going to happen. You know, there's not going to be a World War III. There's not going to be a, a nuclear destruction. There's not going to be apocalypse until that MOTB is established, you know, all around the world. You know, so the MOTB, you know, the Karagma, the, you know, uh, devices that, that they want to put inside of you has to be established all right it has to be a decree that go out that makes it mandatory all right for people to receive those all right nothing is going to happen you know until the motb is established you know so the doomsday clock according to wikipedia it says the doomsday clock is a symbol that represents the likelihood of man-made global catastrophe Maintained since 1947 by the members of the bullet, bullet, Bulletin of Atomic Science Scientists. The clock is a metaphor for threats to humanity from unchecked scientific and technical advances. The clock represents the hypothetical global catastrophe as midnight in the Bulletin's opinion on how close the world is to a global catastrophe as a number of minutes or seconds to midnight assessed in January of each year. 
The main factors influencing the clock are nuclear risk and climate change. The bulletins, science, and security board monitors new developments in the life, in the life sciences and technology that can influence irrevocable harm to humanity. The clock's origin set it, a setting in 1947 was seven minutes to midnight. It has been set backwards and forward 24 times, the, uh, the farthest from midnight being 17 minutes in 1991, the nearest being 100 seconds from 2020 to the present. The clock was moved uh, uh, to two and a half minutes in 2017, then forward to two minutes to midnight in January 2018 and left unchanged in 2019. In January 2020, it was moved forward 100 seconds before midnight. And I believe um, the, the assassination of Soleimani you know, is um, which was the the, the second in command in, in Iran that triggered that, as well as you know the the CP that was going on or that happened in 2020. Um, it says the clock setting was left unchanged in both 2021 and 2022. Since 2010, the clock has been moved forward over four minutes and has changed by five minutes in 20 seconds since 1947 which um if you want you can go to this uh, wikipedia you know uh, article and you can um look up the more history on it you know i just wanted to read that you know but because it hasn't changed in 2021 and 2022 doesn't mean that we're now at a state of peace you know because that's what people think you know in their mind the fact that they've been given a little liberty you know and and uh nothing further has happened you know to to uh, push the world closer towards an apocalypse they think that they're at a state of peace and that's the reason why the scriptures say uh in first thessalonians uh the the fifth chapter verse three for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape now we have our own doomsday clock and our doomsday clock is more accurate than the one that Esau has you know our doomsday clock is prophecies and that's the reason why you know I mentioned earlier you know if their doomsday clock hit zero and the MOTB isn't established around the world yet then nothing is going to happen you know, the scripture says in the book of 2nd Ezra 9 and 1, he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and, and uh, plain beginnings in wonder, in powerful works, and endings in effects and signs. You know, but before these things happen in the earth, the Most High Heavenly Father declared them. You know, before they, they happen, you know, he gives the message unto the holy prophets and the holy prophets prophesy what's going to happen before it happens. The book of Isaiah 46 and 10, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. It tells you in the book of Amos. You know, Yahweh reveals his secrets into his service, the prophets, you know, so the prophets are the mouthpiece of Yahweh. You know, they, they, they prophesy his, his, his word before it comes to pass. You know, the book of um, 2 Ezra 15 and 1, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, 
which I have put in your in, in thy mouth, Sep Yahweh, and caused them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So that's how we measure the time. That's how we know what time we're in. That's how we know what's getting ready to happen. You know, and what's getting ready to happen is the day of destruction. You know, the day of doom, as the scriptures calls it. But also the day of the doom is the day, the, the day of doom is the day of the Lord. You know, so doomsday is going to happen. You know, the, the earth is, is, is uh, uh, in the apocalypse, <laughs> you know, or getting ready to enter into the apocalypse. You know, there's going to be uh, uh, world changing events. You know, I don't want to say world ending. You know, because the only thing that's going to change is the rulers that are all over the planet Earth. You know, from Esau, Edom to Yahweh and the children of Israel. So there will be world changing events that happen and they will be highly catastrophic. All right. And so much that, you know, uh, um, the bodies of, of, of humans will be cast out as dung upon the Earth all right, in, in a great number. Now, 2nd Ezra 7 and 36, then I said, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites and Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. Now, Abraham didn't pray for the Sodomites, you know, you know, for those people that were uh, take, taken within those lewd acts to be saved. He prayed because his nephew Lot dwelt amongst them. So he didn't want them to be destroyed because there was hopes for Abraham that his, that his uh, nephew Lot will be saved, in which Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and he left a uh, Lot and his family alive, but his wife was turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back, you know, uh, sad because of the substances that they were losing when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness, you know, and even though they were a faithless generation and they were wicked, Moses still prayed for them that Yahweh would not destroy all of them, you know, and Yahweh Shai, you know, which, which is uh, known in the Old Testament as Joshua. But here within the Apocrypha, his name is, is written as Jesus, but his name is actually pronounced in the Hebrew as Yahweh Shai after him for Israel in the time of Achan, you know, which Achan, you know, took an accursed thing. He took a thing that Yahweh said not to take, you know, and a curse came upon him, you know, and he was destroyed. And similarly, you know, within this time, you know, selling out unto Esau, you know, uh, um, bowing down, you know, uh, uh, selling your soul, you know, just to uh, uh, partake within this accursed thing, you know, those accursed things that you get when you sell out. And furthermore, the MOTB, which is a cursed thing, is going to lead to a lot of Israelites being destroyed. Uh, reading Noah, Samuel and David for the destruction, Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary and Elijah for those that receive rain. And for the dead that they that he might live and Hezekiah for the people in the time of Sennacherib and many for many. Even so now seeing corruption is grown and wickedness is uh, increased and righteousness have uh, the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so now also? He answered me and said, this life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality to, uh, for to come when corruption is past. So the day of doom is coming, the day of doom. And I remember um, not too long ago, I want to say it was uh, Trump that made that statement. <laughs> uh, they called... Um, they called us the prophets of doom, you know, within the, uh, <laughs> an articles. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Trump lashes out at uh, perennial prophets of doom. <laughs> Although, he, you know, he was mentioned, you know, those people that, 
speak about the, the, the climate, you know, and, and such things like that. But really, you know, it's us. You know, we're the we're the true prophets of doom. You know, because when the prophets prophesied, all right, it was usually in regards to these particular things that's getting ready to be read right here within the chapter of Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says the prophets that have pro that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, you know, and to sum that up within one word, what is that? That's doom. You know, so the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past and temperance is at an end. And fidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him uh, that have gotten the victory. You know, which we're going to get the victory through Yahweh Shai. And that's the reason why you have to believe upon Yahweh Shai. You have to repent of your sins, your wickedness, your wretchedness, and you have to believe upon Yahweh Shai. You have to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. Without him, there's no salvation. Now, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. When you die, you go before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, and you're told what's going to be done unto you within the next life to come. All right. And when you come within this life, you receive judgment within the flesh, within your body. All right. That everyone may receive of the things done in his body according to that he have done whether it be good or bad so you're getting ready to receive a judgment within your body for all of the things that you have done whether they be good or bad and that's the reason why you need to repent and believe upon your second Ezra is nine and going to verse seven all right this time it says and everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them uh, for, for me from the beginning, which is speaking of the elect. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. You know, so the sword, you know, the famine, you know, and destruction. All right, all of those things are, are getting ready to come upon, you know, the wicked. So it will behoove you, you know, to repent in the name of Yahweh Shai and believe upon him so that your transgressions can be parted. The book of Zephaniah 2 and 2. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chafe, before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon you, before the day of Yahweh's anger come upon you, seek ye Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgments. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of Yahweh's anger. You know, because the day is coming that's going to burn as an oven. You know, a day of, of, of hot fire, thermonuclear destruction. That's going to be offset different places around the world where these nuclear missiles are going to be shot. And all of the wicked are going to be burned up. All of the wicked are going to be destroyed as the stubble within the fire, as, as wood, you know, logs, sticks, those things that are able to perish when heat is placed upon them because heat is going to be placed upon the world via thermonuclear destruction. Malachi 4 and 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yet all that do wickedly shall be stubble. The day that cometh shall burn them up, except Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So that's speaking about the thermonuclear destruction, and that's how World War Three is going to be fought. All right, it's going to be a nuclear apocalypse. And when that day comes, when that day pre pre presents itself, which is the day of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, also known as the day of doom. 
all right you're gonna want to be off of the planet you're not gonna want to be on this planet all right you're gonna be want to be hidden somewhere and that's the reason why the scriptures say this in the book of isaiah 26 and 20 come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed well where are you going to be hidden at if you're part of the elect you're going to be hidden in the chariot and that's the reason why the scriptures say only with thine eyes shall thou behold the destruction upon the wicked because you will be in the chariot looking down upon the destruction that comes upon the wicked psalms 91 and 1 he that dwelleth in the secret places of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty so the secret places is is speaking of this truth this wisdom knowledge and understanding and 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 you don't have the wisdom knowledge and understanding you don't have the truth if you don't believe in yahweh Shai. so the shadow of the almighty is speaking of the chariot i will say of yahweh he is my refuge and my fortress my power and him will i trust surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with the with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler so it's speaking of being hid in a chariot from thermonuclear destruction thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the arrow that five by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee only with thine eyes shall thou see uh shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked you know which which wherever you may be all right the wicked that's around you are going to see you if you're part of the elect being beamed up but then you're going to see them receiving their judgment via the thermonuclear destruction all right when you're safe within the chariots and hey you're going to escape by the skin of your teeth because right when you're going up those missiles are going to be coming down and that's the reason why it mentions within the book of uh, Revelation, you know, the 11th chapter and the 14th verse or the 13th verse. Yeah, the fourth, the 13th verse, it says in the same hour, there was a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell and the earthquake was slain of men, 7,000 and the remnant were fighting and gave glory unto the power of heaven. The second woe is past. And behold, the third world qu coming quickly. So that third woe is going to be fought with the weapons of Yahweh's indignation, which are the ICBM missiles. And it's going to cause a great earthquake in the, in, the, in the earth. And it's going to cause a tenth part of the city, the great city, which is Babylon the whore. All right. Also known as Americo. All right. <laughs> you know, being silly with that one. But the tenth part of the city because when this country is 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 in a state of emergency you know is broken down within 10 zones or 10 regions you know so a tenth part of the city which means the whole land is going to be destroyed all right and in that destruction a complete number of people are going to be destroyed but while they're being destroyed you're going to be going up simultaneously so the remnant were frightened and gave glory, which is speaking of the elect. The elect is the remnant. The book of First uh, Peter's, the fourth chapter, and the seventeenth verse. It says, "For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh, and if it first begin at us, which shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh." For if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? You know, so the ungodly and the sinners are getting ready to be destroyed via the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and thermonuclear destruction.
those same chariots that are going to hide the elect in them are going to be killing people. All right. And, and those that are, are not killed by the, the chariots are going to be destroyed within the thermonuclear destruction. Joel, the, the second chapter, verse one, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh cometh for it is nigh. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Which the reason that it's going to be a day of darkness is because when those nuclear missiles hit, you know, there's going to be uh, 200 million warheads that are detonated that, you know, so it's going to cause smoke, you know, and debris and ash to blow up in the sky to the point where it blocks out the sun. If you ever uh, seen a, a video of a live and active volcano, when it kicks that ash up in the in the, in the sky, it blocks out the sun. Or when a, when a wildfire happened, you know, that's of a, a destructive proportion. All right, the smoke and the ash that goes up in the sky turns the sky red, you know, or, or, or dark. And it blocks out the sun or blocks out the moon. It blocks out the stars. So it's very dark. Well, it's going to be even worse than that in the time when these nuclear warheads are shot in the earth so these nukes is that great people are strong all right an army in the army of yahweh Shai, and it has never been the like neither shall it be any more after it because there's not going to be any more use for them reading knowing the fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth and the land is as the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yeah and nothing shall escape them so you won't be able to get on a boat you can't get on a plane you can't hop in one of floyd mayweather's bugattis all right and 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 you know uh zoom away from this destruction nothing is going to escape them the only way that you can escape it is to be a part of the elect and to get beamed up in the chariots. All right, that's the only way you can escape. Otherwise, you can't escape. So it says, a flame burneth. Uh, uh, it says, a uh, uh, fire devoureth before them, which is speak of, speaking of the nuclear destruction, and a flame, and behind them a flame burneth, because that uh, rocket uh, propellant you know that heat is 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 used to project them to the destination that they're going so it says before them the land is is a paradise you know the land is as eating but behind them a desolate wilderness so so everything is going to be destroyed every single thing in its radius is going to be destroyed now 200 million of them is going to hit over here so that means nothing is going to remain. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen shall they run. And the reason it says the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses is because of the way that they, they, they uh, uh, leaped, you know, from the silo, you know, to where they're going. It looks like they, like they gallop, you know, but then also horses represent strength. And an example could be found in Job 39 and 19. Has thou given the horse strength? And hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a, a grasshopper? The glory of his nostril, nostrils is terrible. He paweth the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. See? So horses represent strength. The book of Revelations 9 and 14 saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates and the four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour in a day in a month in a year to slay the third part of men 
and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand and I heard the number of them you know which this scripture isn't speaking about the, the Chinese military or it's not speaking about an actual army or horses or horsemen but the horses is a metaphor for the ICBM missiles and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of Jason and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions so how can the heads of these horses be as the heads of lions which shows that it's a metaphor for something that would devour something that would destroy but that's powerful and that has strength and out of their mouth issued fire smoke and brimstone by these three with the third part of men killed by the fire by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouths and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents and in their heads uh, so like it, and head heads with them that do hurt so those heads are the nuclear warheads all right which um when the missile is shot you know the missile has different stages that that it, it breaks down it you know and at one part of those stages when it's being shot it leaves behind it a trail of smoke and the trail of smoke looks like a serpent coiling you know then it breaks down you know uh, to one stage then it reaches another stage once it it, it finally gets to you know the uh, out of the atmosphere you know and into out of space you know then the final things that are left is, is those nuclear warheads and when those nuclear warheads are entering back into the atmosphere they look like uh, um the the color of jason you know they look the color of of of, of metal burning what is taken out of out of you know an oven you know, then it enters back in within the uh, the windows on high, you know, and it goes to its de destination. And when it finally gets to its destination, you know, when it gets to its final destination, it's a wrap. Joel 2 and 5. Like as the noise of chariots on the top of the mountain, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire, shall they devour the stubble as a strong people sat in battle array. Before their faces, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Yeah, because people know that there's a possibility of a nuclear war that's going to break out, but they don't want it to happen. So when that day finally comes, the people are going to be afraid. You know, and the prophets have been warning of it. So you can't say that you didn't know that this day was coming. Read and knowing they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war. All right, they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks, which means that whatever destination that they're heading to, they're going to go to that destination. They're not going to alter their course. They're not going to go anywhere else. They're not going to change direction. The book of 2 Ezra 16 and 15 says the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. See, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, turned if not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the, the earth shall not return again. And the thermonuclear destruction is the last plague that Yahweh will send upon the earth. All right, it's the very last plague. It's the final plague. Joel 2 and 8. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So what man or horse, you know, can fall upon a sword or get cut, you know, or get shot and not be wounded. All right. So that lets you know that this, this is speaking about uh, ICBM missiles. Joel 2 and 9. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the horses. That was like the houses. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Yeah, because the nuclear mush, uh, the nuclear uh, detonation, you know, is going to send a sweeping wave of fire and heat. You know, that's going to go in all directions. 
and it's gonna destroy everything in his path. You know, it's gonna destroy, you know, cars. It's gonna destroy houses. It's gonna destroy buildings. All right, it's gonna destroy everything within his path. So if it's gonna destroy those things, you know, that are that are, are stronger than the flesh, how much more so the flesh? You know, so that's the reason why it says it shall climb up the buildings. It shall climb up in the windows. You know, it shall climb through the houses. Speaking about the nuclear uh, fire and the nuclear heat wave that's going to go in all directions of each uh, nuclear warhead that's detonated. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague where with Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. All right, because people are elements too. So people are going to be destroyed. The book of 2 uh, Peter 3 and 10. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness conversation in the greek and astrophe your conduct the way that you con conduct yourself you should be following in the example of yahweh shai to the best of your ability believing upon him all right so that you can be a, a set upon that rock so when when these things come upon the earth all right, you're not you're not destroyed. So you should be believing in Yahweh Shah. You should repent, and believe in Yahweh Shah, because this time is coming. All right, this destruction is coming. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of of the Lord, the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall burn with the fervent heat. So within the day of Yahweh, this is what's getting ready to happen. The chariots are going to be doing a lot of destruction. And the scripture said that Yahweh Shah is coming with a terrible anger. All right. The scripture says that that uh, he of long time holding his peace. Now shall he cry out like a woman in travail. He's going to let out a shout and do a lot of destroying and killing. All right. And those nukes are going to do a lot of destroying as well. So the day is coming. All right. The day of Yahweh, we're in the heavens. Being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What's going to cause them to melt? The, the, the nuclear destruction. So people are elements too, which means that they're going to be melt. All right. As is stated within the book of Zechariah. Back in Joel 2 and 10, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So, although, you know, they have this doomsday clock, all right, even if it hits zero, as long as the MOTB is in here, and, and, and that system isn't established in the earth, nothing is going to happen until that MOTB is established. So once that MOTB is established, then the uh, angels of the Lord will be able to proceed and work on the minds of these leaders, you know, to, to, to go ahead and get World War III popping off. And in the midst of World War III, you know, Yahweh Shah is gonna come and gather the elect and he's gonna destroy a lot of the wicked. And when the elect is gathered, the thermonuclear destruction is going to happen in the earth. And in the thermonuclear destruction, a lot of people are going to be destroyed. All right. So the day of Yahweh is at hand. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. In Shalom and Abad Babal.